Hello, everybody, and welcome to what is the first and what I hope is a nice series of tutorials that will break down how to use Caltopo as a planning tool. This uh, first tutorial will go over some of the basic features of Caltopo, um, you know, what it is, what it does, just to give you an idea of what the different pieces of it are. Um, Basically, first and foremost, Caltopo is a free website that contains scanned USGS and other topographic map data covering the entirety of the United States of America. So right off the bat, you know you can get topographic maps for just about anywhere you want. So you go up into the field and you can say, I'd like a topographic map of Yosemite Valley. So you type in Yosemite Valley, whoop, there it is. Or you type in the Grand Canyon, Boom, there it is. Or you can type in Haleakala Crater. Boom, there it is. So the other thing about this is that the topo maps are synced up to the actual coordinates where, um, you know, they synced up with actual geographic coordinates. So for example, if you're looking up at this top right hand box that I'm kind of circling with my mouse, and then you look at the mouse and you notice how the numbers fluctuate, Everywhere I put the mouse is a different coordinate on the map, and it's synced up so that the map is actually placed exactly over this geographic coordinate. So if I'm hovering my mouse over White Hill, I'm finding the precise coordinates for White Hill. And that opens up this whole world of possibilities in terms of using this um, for geographic coordinates, using it for route creation, using it for um, you know, getting information on trails. I use this pretty extensively when I'm writing hiking guides because I can extrapolate all kinds of information based off of the maps and based off of the coordinates that helps me to figure out how far it is from one point to another, um, you know, what the elevation gain is. I can create all kinds of things like elevation profiles and so on and so forth. So just the combination of a topographic map that is synced up with geographic coordinates right off the bat creates a lot of options in terms of being able to research and study different routes. Now, there are a bunch of other features that you can do. You can import existing GPS tracks. So let's, let's try that. I think I've got something I can pull up. This is Rock House Valley in the Anza Borrego Desert. It's pretty far away from Haleakala, but let's bounce to it. So right here, this is a GPS track covering um, Rock House Valley. And that was something that I created when I was doing the field work for a foot in a field. And you can see all the different waypoints and all the different notes attached to them. You can also export it. So if I wanted to, I could download that as a GPS file. I could you know, get rid of some of those markers, export. Now suddenly I've got the GPS file all for myself. Since Caltopo lets you draw lines and it also lets you utilize existing GPS track data, you can create your own tracks pretty easily doing this. Um, some of the other features allow you to use lines to measure distance between two points. So let's say you wanted to walk from here to here. That precise distance is 2.4 miles. It doesn't really tell you much about the elevation gain in the terrain, which I can tell you from experience is pretty gnarly. Um, but you can also do things like print your own custom maps. So if you're like me and you like to actually have a paper map on hand when you're um, hiking in a place like Anza Borrego, you can create a PDF covering a specific area. It lets you customize the size of it. You generate the PDF. I'm not sure it's going to show up. For you here but um, that creates the PDF and then um, there's a bunch of configurations that you can do to change the the source of the GPS data you can put it into metric system if you want you can change the coordinate system to your preference you can do a lot of different tinkering and futzing around just to see if you can get it where you want it to be then oh, let's get rid of this one There are also um, a bunch of features here on this drop-down menu. Um, this allows you to toggle between the various types of maps. So for example, we're looking at the USGS topo map, which is the gold standard map created by the US government. You can switch it over to the map builder topo. It has a very different look and it would look even better. Yep, there it is. It has a very different look. It doesn't have nearly as much ge um, of, of the data that you'd find on the USGS topo, but it's also easier to read the topography. Um, there's a Forest Service map. The 2013, the big difference between the 2013 and the 2016 option is that the 2016 option um, has forest cover indicated. 
So that's all the forest up on top of Toro Peak. You don't see it with the 2013 option. And then there's some other fun stuff like the uh, Federal Aviation Sectional. This is a navigation map that they use for flying. It's not much use for roof uh, planning, but it is pretty fun to look at. And then, of course, there's uh, the marine charts, which won't show you anything over land, but if you went to the ocean, you can see the topography of underwater areas. Not that that's going to help you with hiking all that much, but still pretty cool to use. And then um, there are a lot of other layers that you can use. You can use Google map layers. You can do satellite, so you can actually see the places that you're hiking to. You could check out water sources. You can check out vegetation. You can hybridize it. That's a lot like what you would pull up if you were using Google Maps on your um, on your phone. It even has this one fun feature where you can transpose um, visitor maps according to the GPS tracks or the um, according to coordinates. So that's the, the Yosemite National Park visitor map transposed over its actual location. That's kind of fun. And then there are, you have the ability of stacking different maps. So if you wanted to have the N N uh, National Park Service visitor map transposed with the scanned 7.5 minute map, you could underlay the 7.5 minute map, even though that becomes pretty difficult to use. Then, of course, this feature offers different overlays. You can add contours. Map Builder overlay shows those are the GPS um, data tracks. These are all trails that um, correspond with GPS tracks that were recorded by, you know, I don't really know who, but people um, out there who feed that into things like open source map. Slope angle shading, land management, that shows the boundaries of various uh, land management designations. So this gray is the bound, that, that all denotes um, Yosemite National Park, while the green shows national forest land. Um, white shows private property. And on and on and on, if you want to find out fire history. Uh, it's moving pretty slow because I got some stuff running. But anyways, you get the idea. You can futz around with a lot of these stuff, but, and I'll get it, I'll do future tutorials that break down what these functions actually do and how you can use them. Let me, oh, there's all the fire data. Yeah, the Yosemite burns a lot. We'll get rid of these things. So to break all those things down and show you how to use, um, use this for route planning. But for now, you've got a basic idea of what the functions are, what you can look at. Um, you can drag it around like this, you can use the area arrows. You can also plug in specific locations like Carlsbad, California. It'll take you right there. Um, so that should be enough to give you some of the basics. And you can basically jump in and start screwing around with it and playing around with different features. That's how I learned to use it. But I'm going to get into the weeds with a lot of the different things, such as the GPS tracks you can create, how you can plan routes, how you can export GPS tracks, how you can create your own maps, and so on and so forth. So hope that was useful for you, and uh, thanks for listening.